His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended the coronation of His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim ibn Sultan Iskandar as King of Malaysia. The ceremony, which took place at Astana, Negara, in Kuala Lumpur, was attended by His Majesty at the invitation from His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim. Upon arrival at the Balai Rong City Hall at Astana Negara, His Majesty King Hamad was greeted by the Prime Minister of Malaysia Anwar Ibrahim and the Bahraini National Anthem was performed. His Majesty King Hamad then met His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, extending heartfelt congratulations and wishing him health, happiness and success in his royal duties for the progress and prosperity of Malaysia and its people. His Majesty King Hamad praised the strong historical relations between Bahrain and Malaysia, highlighting commitment to enhancing cooperation and joint efforts to serve the interests of both nations and their peoples. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim thanked His Majesty King Hamad for attending the coronation expressing deep appreciation for the congratulations and the sentiments that reflect the deep and long-standing ties between the two countries. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim also lauded His Majesty King Hamad's efforts to strengthen Bahraini-Malaysian relations, wishing him good health and continued prosperity for the people of Bahrain. ke bawah duli yang maha mulia Raja Bahrain
keberangkatan ke bawah duli yang maha mulia Seri Paduka Baginda yang di-Pertuan Agung dan ke bawah duli yang maha mulia Seri Paduka Baginda Raja Permaisuri Agung ke Balai Rung Seri The coronation ceremony began with the entry of His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim and his consort into the Balai Rong Siri Hall. The Holy Quran was presented to His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim. Then the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Anwar Ibrahim, delivered a speech. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim then received the state sword and took the oath. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim then addressed the distinguished guests. The Malaysian national anthem was played and a 21-gun salute was fired in honor of the newly coronated monarch. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin wa Rabbil Arsil Azim al-Malikil Quddusi Salamil Mu'min 
Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Allahumma malikal mulki tu'til mulka man tasha wa tanzi'ul mulka mimman tasha wa tu'izzu man tasha wa tudhillu man tasha birikal khayru innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir The ceremony was attended by members of the official delegation accompanying His Majesty King Hamad, Malaysian regional sultans, senior guests and Malaysian government officials. The bilateral ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Malaysia have experienced steady and fruitful development across various domains, thanks to the keen interest and attention accorded to these relations by the leadership of the two brotherly countries. More details in this report. Stemming from the broad horizons of friendship that bind His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim ibn Al Marhoum Sultan Iskandar, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Malaysia enjoy historic relations spanning over five decades. The historic visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Malaysia in 2017, where he met with His Majesty Sultan Mohammed V of Malaysia, has further strengthened these relations, as several memorandums of understanding were signed solidifying the partnership between the two nations. And in the same year, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim ibn al Marhoum Sultan Iskandar, then Sultan and ruler of the Malaysian state of Johor, paid an official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, during which he held discussions with His Majesty the King, focusing on the cordial bilateral relations between Bahrain and the Malaysian state of Johor. These long-standing relations are characterized by shared attributes such as a spirit of tolerance and peace as well as a set of principles that emphasize the preservation of culture and traditions. The economic dossier has been a focal point of the ongoing cooperation between Bahrain and Malaysia as both countries focus on enhancing and developing bilateral partnerships in sectors like economy, tourism, entrepreneurship, small and medium enterprises, financial technology, and innovation. As the two kingdoms continue to work together, this long-standing friendship is poised to yield even greater dividends for both peoples in the years ahead. The unwavering bonds between Bahrain and Malaysia stand as a testament to the power of diplomacy and shared values to bring nations closer together. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. On her re-election, His Majesty reaffirmed Bahrain's commitment to strengthening its partnership with the European Commission to achieve common goals and promote global peace and stability. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, following her re-election. His Royal Highness wished the President of the European Commission continued success in performing her duties.
National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs, Dr. Celeste Wallander, during his visit to the United States. His Highness expressed the pride of the Kingdom of Bahrain for the historic relations and strategic partnership with the United States built on trust, mutual cooperation, and joint coordination as partners and allies in various key areas, including the military and defense fields and the pursuit of peace and stability. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad reviewed with the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs the course of Bahraini-U.S. relations and ways to support the close bilateral cooperation between the two friendly countries in several important fields. In addition to the outcomes of the meetings of the Defense Working Group under the Comprehensive Agreement for Security Integration and Prosperity between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States, the meeting also included a review of the overall regional and international issues of mutual concern. For her part, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs expressed her country's appreciation for the close relations with the Kingdom of Bahrain and the work to enhance them in various military and defense fields, stressing the importance of increasing the frameworks of joint cooperation and coordination to contribute to the establishment of global peace and security. White House American journalist David Ignatius described His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa as one of the most promising and interesting figures in the Gulf region and the Middle East. Ignatius' words came as he introduced the National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa as a keynote speaker at the 15th edition of the Aspen Security Forum held in Colorado, USA. Speaking at the forum, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain has taken a clear path in enhancing dialogue and cooperation and extending a helping hand to all countries of the world. Thanks to the royal vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the efforts of the esteemed government headed by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, his Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness indicated that the Arab summit recently hosted by Bahrain emphasizes the country's role in the values of peace dialogue and coexistence among peoples. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also noted that the Kingdom of Bahrain has a close and historical relationship with the United States of America extending over many years that has witnessed developments in various fields reflected by the signing of the Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement which is an important cooperation agreement between the two countries in the economic, military, political, security, defense, science and technology fields. His Highness pointed out that His Majesty the King leads a vision to consolidate the foundations of peace and prosperity and open channels of communication with all countries, noting that the Kingdom of Bahrain was and remains on the path of promoting peace and dialogue. First of all, I'm a proud Bahraini to be part of OPG um, as the only state that we have been um, announcing uh, in our statements. Uh, together with the United States and the rest of the countries that are in this operation. Um, let me do a bit of, of history as well here. The Kingdom of Bahrain and how much we, we punch way over our weight. Um, and I believe that this is courage from our leadership. Ever since back uh, to, to uh, 200 years ago. But I'm going to stick to the U.S. and Bahrain relations. Um, we had the fifth fleet in Bahrain, more than 75 years. Um, obviously, the State of Department came afterwards, probably to take the credit. But you know, they, they came after the fifth fleet. Um, and then we have started the combined operations with the United States. It wasn't just us hosting the United States. It was um, us being there, opening our bases to the United States. And uh, we fought communism with you. We fought the Gulf War with you. We have opened all of our uh, bases. And it was full of the American uh, jet uh, in, in, in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We were proud, proud at that time. Um, and then we have fought Daesh with you. We were for 40 days alone fight, fighting ISIS uh, together with you. Um, and then you name it. We have been there. We, have, we are a non-NATO ally. Uh, but we, we fight hard alongside with the United States. We believe in the cause. 
we believe and there will be no security, there will be no harmony, there will be no stability in the region unless if we put hands together and take action. And then lately, as you mentioned, in the OPG. Um, obviously, um, this operation, us being part of this operation, is definitely not against one party, or let me say al-Houthis. It is us there securing the world's interests. And we see how important it is, and we feel responsible to be part of that, um, uh, uh, part of this uh, mission, to make sure that we, have, we, we continue and maintain the flow. Is it working as good as we expect? I don't believe so, but we, there is a margin that we can also improve our um, um, operations over there. His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa also expressed his confidence in the capabilities of Bahraini youth to advance work levels in all the fields, stressing that the Kingdom of Bahrain seeks through well thought out plans to secure the future of the next generation. Now in Bahrain, uh, me as a national security advisor, I'm, I'm very much uh, keen in our national identity because without a past, without a, a, a foundation, you do not understand your cause. Now, us in the Kingdom of Bahrain, we do not live up every single day upon promises. We live upon, upon purpose every single day. And what we plan for is not the next week or the next meeting, is we plan for the next generations. We have identified the issues. We have identified where are the threats within our people, first of all, and then the uh, radius around them. Um, this is why our government is the one that pays the tax for its people to make sure that they are highly educated, number one, and then secured uh, with a job, secured with a purpose, and they understand what are they made of as Bahrainis. Um, I see that in the region, and we are thankful to have a leadership that understands it, identifies it, and also takes action upon it. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held a meeting in Kuala Lumpur with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Malaysia, Muhammad Hassan, on the occasion of the official visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Kingdom of Malaysia to participate in the inauguration ceremony of His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim ibn al Marhum Sultan Iskandar, as King of Malaysia. The meeting discussed aspects of the strong, friendly relations between the two friendly countries and the notable growth they are witnessing in various fields, as well as ways to develop bilateral cooperation in various political, economic and investment fields within the framework of the agreements of joint cooperation that bind the two countries and serve the mutual interests of the two countries and their friendly people. The two sides also discussed areas of enhancing joint cooperation and raising it to wider horizons through the activation of the role of the Supreme Ministerial Committee between the two friendly countries and the membership of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation in Southeast Asia and its amended protocols, which the Kingdom of Malaysia will chair at the beginning of 2025. In addition, they reviewed the objectives of the initiative of the Kingdom of Bahrain within the framework of its presidency of the 33rd Arab Summit regarding the establishment of a forum for partnership between the League of Arab States and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, to develop and enhance the relationships of friendship and cooperation between the Arab countries and the countries of Southeast Asia at all levels. The two sides reviewed the outcomes of the Arab summit hosted by Bahrain last May under the chairmanship of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which adopted constructive initiatives, the most prominent of which were the call to convene an international conference to resolve the Palestinian issue and establish the Palestinian state and support the recognition of the state of Palestine and the acceptance of its full membership in the United Nations, providing educational and health services to those affected by conflicts and disputes in the region in cooperation and coordination with international and regional organizations and developing Arab cooperation in the field of financial technology, innovation and digital transformation. The two sides also exchange views on the latest regional and international developments, the efforts being made to achieve peace, security and stability in the Middle East, the ongoing war in the Gaza Strip and its repercussions on regional security and stability and the Arab and international efforts being made to reach a permanent ceasefire the release of hostages and detainees, and the delivery of humanitarian aid to the civilian population in the Gaza Strip.
The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has expressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's welcome for the advisory opinion issued by the International Court of Justice regarding the legal consequences of the Israeli policies and practices in the occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem, based on the request from the United Nations General Assembly. The Ministry emphasized the importance of the Court's advisory opinion as it supports the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and the establishment of their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. It reiterated the Kingdom of Bahrain's call for the international community to fulfill its responsibilities in supporting the rights of the Palestinian people and backing the efforts to establish a just and comprehensive peace which would enhance security and stability in the region for the benefit of all its people. The Arab Regional Center for World Heritage witnessed the opening of the unique and outstanding Jordan's World Heritage Sites exhibition held in cooperation between the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage and the International Council on Monuments and Sites, ECOMOS Jordan. The opening witnessed the presence of the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and President of ECOMOS Jordan, Her Highness Princess Dana Firas. On this occasion, the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities affirmed that the regional center's participation in organizing the exhibition reflects the commitment to enhancing awareness of natural and cultural world heritage sites in the world and in the Arab world. He also extended his sincere thanks to Her Highness Princess Dana Firas for providing the opportunity to present the content of the book in the form of an exhibition to the public in the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising at the same time the strength of the cultural relations between the two brotherly countries. For her part, Her Highness Princess Dana Firas expressed her thanks to the regional center for its continued support of efforts to preserve cultural and natural heritage in Jordan. She pointed out that the exhibition represents a wonderful opportunity for the visitors to explore world heritage sites in Jordan through expressive texts and images that tell stories about Jordan's ancient history. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has urged all Bahraini citizens abroad to contact their respective airlines before heading to the airport to confirm the status of their return flights. This comes following global technical challenges that have impacted air travel at several international airports. The minister also reminded the citizens that in case of any emergencies, they could contact the Foreign Ministry's follow-up office, which operates around the clock at the following number, 00973 1722 555.